Hi guys and gals, I'm Margaret, and here's my quarantine story. It's not that tragic, I must admit, yet it's definitely worth hearing. It's got a pretty important message. I grew up on my parents' farm, far from civilization. We had a small house, several acres of land occupied by various farm buildings and some fields. My parents raised animals for sale and needed some vegetables and hay to feed them. Without it, a single cow would bankrupt you. Our farm reminded me of a separate mini-state. We even had a meal where my parents grounded flour. My mom used it to bake homemade bread and all sorts of goodies. The four of us lived on this farm together from late autumn to spring. Me, my parents, and my older brother George. We all worked each day, and life never seemed dull. And in the spring, Dad hired extra hands. And then the real work began. The laborers came as whole families. We even built some extra sheds for them. Of course, the sheds had no heating, but the work season here is very hot. Besides that, they included all the other conveniences. And while the adults worked, we children enjoyed our summer and each other's company. In fact, I've got a lot of happy childhood memories. I still remember how Dad drove us to school in his old car, how George and I stole fresh buns from a baking sheet in the kitchen, how we once climbed into a barn to young lambs, and even fell asleep there in the warm hay. Then we both matured. George, as the eldest, was the first to leave the farm from a college. A year later, I followed in his footsteps. I was only 16 at that time, and to be honest, it was terribly scary for me to leave my home. But then I moved to a dorm, started studying, and in time, my life completely changed its course. George and I lived in the same city, but only rarely met. Now both of us had a life of our own. I wasn't really offended, because I understood perfectly well that my brother had escaped from the farm and was now catching up. Sometimes, he sent me pictures from clubs. Sometimes he called and described to me his new friends. Both of us sometimes studied, sometimes partied, and everything was okay. We didn't return to my parents too often, because they lived far away from our new home. We didn't have our own cars. George had no money for it, and I was too young. We were only able to come back home by bus, and it was a six-hour long trip to our farm. So usually, we returned only during the holidays, when we had a lot of days off. Well, George often didn't come home even then, because the coolest parties in the vicinity were organized during the holidays, and my brother was quite a party animal. So that spring was the first time we got together in the last two years. But the long-awaited meeting didn't go as planned. We expected to spend three days at home, but we were able to return to study only after three months. As you know, all countries closed off their borders due to the quarantine. Yesterday, we were dancing with the laborers, who also gathered at the farm due to the beginning of the season. And in the morning, there was an announcement over the radio. The cities were closed off and all the people were ordered to stay at home. Guess all of us should be considered extremely lucky. Well, the event itself was definitely horrible. But during these dark times, all our family actually stayed together, close to each other, able to help each other with lessening the tension. Mom was especially afraid of it. She cried a lot and prayed every night, asking for good health for each of us. Long story short, good thing all of us managed to get home before the epidemic struck. Unfortunately, soon we understood that such an isolation had such minuses of its own, and the very first of them turned out to be the lack of space for us. Well, not for all of us, just for me and my brother. Since we both left, our parents remade the house a bit to fit their own needs. Therefore, our rooms were turned into an extra warehouse for the most important things. As I already said earlier, we had returned home one at a time. Then, there was no problem, because we had a guest bedroom with a large, comfortable bed. But now, two of us arrived at once, and there was only one guest bedroom in the house. Our parents simply laughed and shook their heads and said that we could remember childhood and live in a same room. You see, when we were small kids, we used to live in a single room, and we really liked it. So here was a chance to remember everything. George and I pointed out that we were already adults and didn't want to fight each other for the bed space. Dad only suggested that one of us could sleep in a barn with lambs. 
Then, we thought that due to the quarantine, our parents would ask the laborers to leave, and each of us would have a shed of our own. But then Dad told the laborers that they were free to leave, but in that case, they won't have the job, and he was still willing to provide it. Apparently, Dad received permission from the authorities to continue work at the farm. It was because our farm provided the nearby cities with food, and that was essential for their survival. We were allowed almost everything. We could go anywhere talk with anyone, work. We only were prohibited to leave the farm. Only dad and his porters who brought meat to the shops had permission to leave. So of course people stayed inside. We were safe because we didn't buy anything from outsiders. We produced everything we needed ourselves. We didn't let the outsiders in and we had a doctor of our own. Besides, the laborers would also receive their expected salary at the end of the season. Of course, we were happy that the farm didn't stop working, but George and I still had problems. At first, we made an agreement. One of us slept on the floor and the other on the bed, and on the next day, we changed places, but that was extremely inconvenient. George even tried to move to the living room, but it was open to the people from early morning until late at night. We got zero sleep and became very angry as a result. All in all, we found ourselves in the same bed. Good thing the bed was large enough so that we weren't that uncomfortable. There was enough space for us in order to sleep peacefully without touching each other, even by accident. But the very fact of such proximity was embarrassing enough. Both of us were adults and it felt really awkward. I don't really know whether George noticed or not, because he's quite a dummy in regards to relationships. But I began to feel strange at some point. I can't explain what kind of feeling that was. I've got no words to describe it, because I still consider myself a normal, sane person. But the fact remained. I felt something unnatural. At first, I accidentally noticed that my formerly thin brother had grown some muscles during the recent years. He'd even gotten a six-pack. Really? But at that time, I felt only surprise and nothing more. But later, it was as if something came over me. I noticed something that I would never want to see. One day, I realized that George was in fact a very handsome guy. One of those they called girl magnets. His face was handsome, his body looked nice, and he had a smile that made girls' knees weak. My thoughts took an increasingly dubious direction. At some point, the admiration grew into something that was clearly wrong. I understood that it was wrong that I looked at my own sibling, with whom I spent my whole childhood together with. I've always thought that it would be impossible to develop romantic feelings for a person who had just recently stopped eating boogers from his own nose. But for some reason, all my logic disappeared as soon as I saw George, and my nights turned into a real nightmare. I've spent hours laying there looking at my brother's face in the moonlight like a heroine from a terrible girl's novel. There was a real battle in the center of my mind, and in the end, I still lost that battle. No, nothing happened between us. I was strong enough to stop myself, and George himself would have been horrified if I asked him to engage in something wrong. But I still managed to do something weird. At night, when everyone except me was sleeping peacefully, I made sure that George slept tight and kissed him. At that moment, I thought that my heart would stop because I almost panicked. And then for three more days, I was walking around with a stupid smile on my face and a feeling of delight. Although, to be honest, that kiss was an awkward disappointment and nothing more. When I finally realized that I've almost made a horrible mistake, I began to act. I never slept in that bed anymore. I moved into the barn and slept in hay with the lambs. Still in two months, I was on the verge of banging my head against the wall, howling like I was crazy all the way. I was anxious waiting for the quarantine to end. It would be perfect to rest at the farm together with my beloved relatives, if not for those horrible thoughts. I tried my best, but I never really stopped thinking about how much fun George and I could have had in 18 plus mode, so to say. Good thing I was able to wait till the end of quarantine and never do anything stupid anymore. My suffering had finally finished. It wasn't allowed for the people to move freely across the state, but at least they told us that we were free to move around with masks and proper social distancing, of course. Good enough for me. I would wear a knight's armor in a heartbeat if it would help me get away from our farm. When they lifted the quarantine, I ran away. 
I didn't even say goodbye to everyone as I should. I just went to the road closest to the farm and caught the first ride. Mom called me later with some questions and sent some of my things that I forgot at home, including my favorite headphones and passport. And you know, when I got to my dorm, it all became clear. Suddenly all my feelings from the stay on the farm turned into a whole lot of nonsense. I felt really ashamed of myself. I couldn't believe that I felt something for my own brother. Yep, he grew up and got a nice body, but he was still my brother, and everything looked quite stupid now. Since then, George and I didn't really talk, but something tells me that at our next meeting, I won't feel anything for him anymore. Besides, now I'll only visit my parents with my boyfriend, in case something goes wrong. Write about your strange desires and fantasies in your way to control them in the comments. Share my story with others. Don't forget to leave this video a like. And remember that humans must be able to resist their desires. After all, that's really what distinguishes us from animals.